Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Guys, hope all of you are doing well, inshallah ta'ala. This is a very, very important video. What are we going to be discussing in this video? As you've, as you've probably seen from the title of this video, the thumbnail on this video, we are going to be discussing anti Semitism, Islamophobia. I'm going to bring Islamophobia into this conversation. Candace Owens, some of you may know who she is. She's an American popular political commentator. Uh, she's an author, she's an activist, she's been popular, especially recently, uh, with conversations to do with anti-Semitism. Recently, she had this rabbi on her show, his name is Rabbi Barclay, and I think she had this rabbi after she had on, um, or she had a discussion with Unholy Shmoli. And we are going to be reacting to this interview because I think it's really, really important. And we're going to be in uncovering certain points and also linking things to Islamophobia as well. Let's get straight into this video. Now, I'm gonna go straight into the middle of this video. They're discussing the definition of anti-Semitism. Now, initially, I didn't intend on bringing this bit into the video, but I thought, you know what? This is quite important. Let's get straight into it. Mm -hmm. There's a great teaching that, that comes out of every sociologist, every person in, in academics is that I don't get to tell a black man if he's experiencing racism. Mm -hmm. He knows. I don't get to tell you if you're experiencing misogyny. You know. If I make a comment and it's misogynistic, and you say, Rabbi, you know that was really misogynistic, my job is to say, wow, I didn't mean that. I apologize. That's not what I meant. And you, you and do not get the right to say what is anti-Semitic or Jew hatred. This is now, this is bizarre. And for him to claim that every academic, every sociologist, etc., makes such a blanket statement would basically initially, like basically agree with everything he's just said. This is actually very, very bizarre. What is he essentially saying? He's saying you have no right to tell a black person, a woman, a Jewish person, whether or not you've fallen into racism, anti-Semitism or misogyny. Essentially, it's the following. If I'm a black person, let's say, and someone says, says anything to me, anything, and I interpret that thing as racism, that's it. I have, the, I have my right to say that. You're, racist. you're being racist right now. I'm not happy with what you're doing. You're being racist. So for any Jewish person, essentially with what he has just mentioned, because she asked him to define anti-Semitism, etc. With what he's just mentioned, if I do anything, I could as much as accidentally go in front of a Jewish person in a line. He can turn around and say to me, you're being anti-Semitic. You're an anti-Semitic person here. You're being anti-Semitic. You're a Jew-hating person. And I have no right to say to him, hang on a second, bro. Uh, da -da -da -da. Shh. Can't say nothing. You have no right. So if we go by this, definition why can't we stretch this to anything why doesn't this count for, for islamophobia why doesn't it count for islamophobia if a muslim can a muslim now just come and say i i believe the media is being islamophobic here i believe you're being islamophobic when you say an x y and z to me it doesn't make any sense I'm no, sorry, I'm not trying to, to I didn't, I don't think I said anything about me having the right i just said to you would you then view because I, I did host somebody who was jewish dave smith on my show I'm sure you're familiar with him. Uh, he's a comedian, he's a libertarian. He is not pro-Zionist. So I'm just asking you for clarity because you're saying that you can't dismiss right. a Jewish person, but aren't you thereby dismissing Jewish people who say that I don't support Israel as a state? So, so let me explain what's going on here. He's basically mentioned a couple of minutes ago, a few minutes ago, that his definition nowadays of anti-Semitism is anyone being anti-Israel, anyone being anti-Zionist. If you are anti-Zionism, you are anti-Semitic. So he is directly conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. Do you know what the consequences of his statements are? If me and you and other Jewish people, as Candace Owens is raising the fact, other Jewish people, Dave Smith is an example who she mentioned, come out and say, if we all come out and say, we don't agree with the Zionist idea on Palestine. We don't agree that 600,000, hundreds and thousands of people should be displaced from their homes in Palestine. We don't agree with what you Zionists are doing. 
we've all of a sudden become anti-Jew and uh, anti-Semitic. Now, I also wanted to mention that Candace Owens in the recent days has been accused of anti-Semitism. She's had a campaign against her. And, you know, I just want to read just one, one statement from one of the articles that's online. This is from the American Enterprise Institute. They have written, and I quote, except as Owens' audience has grown, so has her comfort level with airing not only her reactionary takes on Democrats, obese celebrities, and George Floyd, but also her raging out and out anti-Semitism. So I'm just reading this to highlight she has been accused of anti-Semitism. Now this rabbi who's on this show, he actually wrote an article about Candace Owens. And let's get to this discussion on this article. Where in this article he says the following, that Candace Owens is, or she said, that she's okay with Hitler. That Hitler was okay. In this article that you heard that I received your invitation, that is false. I did so not. I think it's important no, to just maybe name the people who told you that I received your invitation. No, I'd rather not do that, especially since you're saying that it's incorrect, and in which case I apologize. No, you can apologize. I just think that like a lot of the reason that things happen is because there is this sort of back-channeling and discussion, and nobody told me that I got an invitation, and now you've written that I refused an invitation. Bear in mind, I just want to pause here. Based on what the rabbi said a few minutes ago, I mean, I've showed you, based on what he said, if he's offended by Candace Owens saying what she's saying right now, which is, uh, you know, do you mind mentioning, you know, who, 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 who told you that I received your invitation, etc. If he's offended and he says, you're being anti-Semitic right now, I don't like this questioning. No one has a right to say anything to him. So essentially, he, he can always just say you're being anti-Semitic with anything that's happening and no one has a right to say anything to him. It's important to note, based on what he's mentioned about anti-Semitism, how open-ended anti-Semitism becomes, or the accusation of anti-Semitism, how easy it is to throw it around. So when you just write, she publicly said Hitler was okay, that is dishonest because what I actually was saying was answering a question, as you brought up, where we were not even talking about Jews, not talking about the Holocaust, a woman was asking about whether or not it's right. okay for people today to say that they're nationalist when it's often associated as a, a dirty word. And what I was saying was that it's wrongly associated with Hitler. I don't believe that Hitler was a nationalist because obviously Hitler invaded Poland. He obviously had ambitions outside wait, wait, of... Have... So what, we have the have clip. Have... We have the clip. So we're going to play you. it. So again, that the question great. that's being asked of me is whether or not nationalism is nationalism is an right. okay word to embrace. Let's play the clip so we can hear me and what that I actually said. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. So again, we're trying there to define nationalism. Does your statement, right. she publicly said that Hitler was okay. Is that an honest statement? Yeah, so let's let's talk about this for a moment. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, you were asked a question about nationalism. Mm -hmm. You responded with an example of Adolf Hitler. Yes, I said because Americans associate, the reason why they think it's a dirty word is because of Adolf Hitler. You responded, and you have subsequently, and I've seen you subsequently, and I think you even said it in the congressional hearing, you have obviously condemned him for was. Um, but you brought Hitler's name into a discussion. Correct. Okay. And you justified that this is how America feels or how people feel. And that's your take on it. It's not necessarily accurate. And in fact, it probably isn't from, a, from an actual sociological standpoint. But that's your opinion. Fine. But Candace, you 
you put in the same sentence what he did if it just had stayed in Germany was okay. But more importantly, and here's a piece of the anti-Semitism. Why bring one of the most evil men of history into the discussion? You could just as easily have given any negative examples of nationalism. So here's the piece of the anti-Semitism. Why did you even mention Hitler? Why did you even mention him? What are you talking about? She's discussing nationalism. She clearly made a specific point that nationalism is perceived in a certain way amongst Americans because they think of Hitler, etc. What are you talking about? So essentially, because you mentioned Adolf Hitler in a sentence, that's the piece of anti-Semitism. And by the way, based on what I said before, you have no right to say to me this isn't anti-Semitic. You chose to bring Hitler up, not them. I did. And I, I have no, you? I'm. I, I, if I could go backwards in the context of trying to understand why Americans think that nationalism is a bad word, it was appropriate for me to bring off Adolf Hitler. It is totally appropriate in any capacity when you are talking about history and historical sentiments to bring up any relevant character that has created those sentiments. So are, I just want to, again, I just want to yes or no. Yeah. After watching so, that, in we, I, I want to make sure we don't run out of time here. After watching that in context, do you think it is fair that you wrote, she publicly said that Hitler was okay? Hitler was okay. Yeah. Yes, by bringing me even into the conversation, yes, I do. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. By bringing Hitler into the conversation, you brought Hitler into the conversation. Even though you're not praising Hitler, you just brought him into the conversation. By you bringing him into the conversation, you have not only fallen into anti-Semitism, but you've also justified me commenting on your speech and saying, you said Hitler was okay. You've justified me saying that just by bringing him into the conversation. Can you believe this? This is a man who's been mentioning sociology, academics, academia, and this standpoint and that standpoint. He's trying to come across as academic. And he's openly, unapologetically, without being shy, making such blanket statements. This is actually unbelievable. Now, this is where I want to take the conversation to Islamophobia now. And this is really, really where I want to set the tone for everyone. Everyone that's watching this video right now. From what he said, and I've mentioned this multiple times because I really want people to understand this. You can say anything. You can say anything. If a Jewish person, according to this man, Rabbi Barclay, if a Jewish person perceives it as anti-Semitic, you have no right to tell them it's not anti-Semitic. You have no right to have that discussion with them. They're entitled to perceive whatever they perceive as anti-Semitic. They're entitled to that perception, okay? Not only that, same goes for black people, same goes for women. If you do anything to a woman and she says this is misogynistic, you have no right to say anything else to her. So why don't we just take this for a second to Islamophobia? Douglas Murray, who has been a public, popular advocate for the Zionist movement in the recent months, has publicly stated about Muslims that we need to make life harder across the board for Muslims in Europe. I'm going to put the statement up on the screen. You can see his exact words. This is what Douglas Murray has publicly stated. Can you imagine for one second, one second, if someone who looks like me, or if I, or one of the other brothers, any Muslim, said publicly, we need to make life hard across the board for Jewish people. Would there even be a question, a question as to whether that's anti-Semitic? Whether we're speaking subjectively or objectively, would there ever be a question as to whether that statement is anti-Semitic? There wouldn't even be a discussion. There wouldn't be a discussion. Such a person who would make such a statement about the Jewish people would be on the news headlines all over the world. But Douglas Murray, popular, he, he, he packages himself as an academic. He is anything but that. 
such people can come publicly and make such statements about an entire religion of people, an entire people who subscribe to a religion and they aren't pulled up. And in his popular, what are we to do about Islam speech, he famously mentioned that mosques need to be pulled down. Please guys, please for one second focus with me. Can you imagine a Muslim academic, activist, anyone saying synagogues need to be pulled down and them just getting away with that scot-free? No way, no way. That would be perceived as anti-Semitic. So we just asked a simple question, why the double standard? Why a certain set of standards for some people and those same standards, in fact, standards that aren't even close to them can't be upheld for people like Muslims. Aside from everything, I wanted this video to be eye-opening for Muslims watching, for non-Muslims watching, and for people to realize what's happening here with definitions. What's happening here? And it seems that these definitions are being crafted in such ways by people like Rabbi Barkley to perhaps even stop anyone from criticizing Israel's actions upon the Gaza Strip, from criticizing Zionism. You cannot criticize the Israeli state. If you criticize the Israeli state, you are anti-Semitic. What are the consequences for pro-Palestinian voices who will criticize Israel and their movements? The consequences are, you're all anti-Semites.